Hey everybody. In this video, I want to talk about my recommendation for how to best use your question banks to not only improve your scores on your question banks and to improve your scores on your NBME practice tests, but just a general framework on how I think it's most effective to study and in a sense, how to biohack your brain into recalling all of the information that you need to know for USMLE and Comlex. Let's get started with the mode of the question banks. I really believe that you have to be using tutor mode. There is no reason, especially early on in your studying, to use timed mode. And I want you to imagine for a second that you were on rotation with me and I was trying to teach you something that you had never learned before. And I said to you, okay, I'm gonna ask you a question and you've got 45 seconds to answer this. And then I proceed to ask you a question and maybe you've heard some phrasing or something familiar in the question, but by and large, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Does the fact that there's a 45 second clock running in the background help you answer that question faster? No, of course not. And it's stupid to think that having the running clock in the background serves you any benefit whatsoever when you're in dedicated content review. So why are you using timed mode? Now, don't get me wrong. I know that there are some people that are like, well, dirty, we have to develop our understanding of the clock because how will we do well on the actual test if we never have the clock running? And I, I understand the point that the person would be trying to make, but the whole purpose of the question bank is not to get familiar with the time constraint of USMLE or Comlex. Rather, it's to learn content, right? A lot of people have the misconception that first aid is where you learn content, and that's simply untrue. You learn your content from UWorld or whatever other question bank you wanna use, UWorld obviously being the best. So when you're doing dedicated content review, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to have that clock running in the background because you need to look at UWorld not as a metric of how you're doing, but as the main content resource where you're going to learn information. So step number one is being comfortable with the idea that UWorld is not to gauge your performance. You should put no stock at all into the percentage of questions you're getting correct. UWorld is only there to teach you content. So point number one that I want you to take out of this video is that UWorld is for content review, it's not for performance, and therefore the best way to utilize it is to put it on tutor mode. Now step two is understanding the anatomy of the question banks and how to go through them and review your incorrect answers. And what you see on the video right now are the three components of what happens when you get a question wrong. So in the explanation, the first part is the main explanation. So this is usually about the topic that the question was asked about. They'll bold some important concepts like the name of the disease, the key symptoms, the buzzwords, the complications, etc. The second part of the question is a more in-depth explanation of why the incorrect answer choices are incorrect. So it'll say something like choice B, blah, 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 is incorrect because of X, Y, and Z. And it'll do that all the way down. In this middle section, you need to pay very close attention to why something is incorrect. Because what the question bank is trying to teach you to do is to be able to rule things in or rule things out. And this is really important because one of the biggest skills that you need to learn while you're studying is to develop high yield intuitive patterns of thinking. So after you've done two, 3,000 practice questions, if you've reviewed the explanation very much in depth under a microscope every single time, you're going to start to develop patterns. So for example, if you look at the example that I put on this slide, choice B, myocarditis, that might be incorrect because in the question, the patient didn't have X, Y, and Z symptoms. So when you get a different practice question in the future about some other topic and myocarditis, is one of the answer choices, you can make the same inference based on whether or not there's the presence of certain symptoms or certain buzzwords in the clinical vignette. 
So when you're reviewing these practice questions, this middle section is extremely important. You need to read every single word, every single sentence. Even if you got the question right, you still want to reinforce the neural networks in your brain by reading this over constantly. The last part of the explanation is the takeaway point. So this is usually a one to three sentence summary of what you were supposed to be able to take home from this practice question. It doesn't really relate to why all of the different answer choices are correct or incorrect. It is literally just a concise delivery of the take home point of the question. And this is really where the magic happens. So you, let's say you do a 40 question practice test. You've got 40 different question bank questions. You're gonna review each of them, spending at least a couple minutes on each question, reading the full explanation from top to bottom, reading why choice A, B, C, D, or E is correct or incorrect, reinforcing those neural networks in your brain to develop high yield patterns of thinking that allow you to, in the future, make the same inference based on this practice question. And then lastly, you get to this high yield take home point. And what you do with this high yield take home point is that as you're reviewing each question one at a time, because again, you're on tutor mode, you are going to write down the high yield take home point in a notebook. So in just a second, I'm going to stop narrating and turn on my camera and actually show you guys in person what my notebook looked like back in the day when I used to do this. But what you wanna do is go out, go to the nearest department store and buy a little bit, a little notebook. For old school sake, buy a composition notebook or a three subject notebook. And what you wanna do is as you review your questions, you wanna constantly be writing down these high yield take home points in bulleted fashion. So when you flip through your notebook, you'll have a one to two sentence point that's the bottom line of the question. So if, for example, you're doing 40 practice questions on UWorld, you go through them one at a time, at the end of that test, after you've reviewed it, maybe you've spent two to three minutes reading each question and writing down the bottom line of that question. So at the end of the day, in your notebook, you'll have 40 points that you can then reread when you're bored later on. And what I hope you guys are seeing is that there's a lot of time and effort that goes into writing out and dissecting all of these UWorld explanations. So I'm suggesting you spend at least two to three minutes on every single question, which means that in a 40 question set, you're spending two hours just reviewing the questions, reading the explanations from top to bottom, and writing out that one to two sentence summary in your notebook. And people ask me all the time, how can I improve my efficiency? How can I improve memorization? And it's all about biohacking. I'm not making this up, guys. This isn't clickbait. When you passively read an explanation for two to three minutes and then take a couple seconds to think actively, what do I wanna write down to remember the bottom line of this question? and you then put it on paper and use visual memory as you're writing it out by hand, you're using lots of different memorization techniques. You're activating lots of different neurons in your brain. You're creating a strong neural network that allows you to encode and then later recall your memories. And this is how it works. So if you're just gonna be passive and just read, or you're gonna open up somebody's Anki deck and be like, hmm, next, hmm, next, hmm, next. That's too passive. This is a multi-layered complex system for hacking your brain to memorize, to understand, to encode, and to apply. And this is how you do it. This is how you improve your question bank and your NBME scores. So now that I've given you my very long explanation, about the foundation for how this works and how you do it, let me show you what your notebook will look like when you're done. So as promised, here is the notebook that I used back in the day when I was in medical school to write out my high yield bottom lines. Basically, again, the only thing you write out, if we just flip to a random page, is what you would need to take out of the question in the question bank in order to understand the point they were trying to convey. And as you can see here, 
if you have this notebook and you know, boom, 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 these are all questions. These are all different questions. And this was the bottom line of the question. When you're bored, I know you're not going to be bored when you're in dedicated, but when you have downtime and you're taking a road trip somewhere or you're sitting on the toilet or you're ignoring your in-laws, what you do is you whip out this notebook and you just power through these points. Boom, 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 boom. And you're rereading them because I understand that it's inefficient for you to open UWorld back up on your computer and open up an old test. So to save yourself from having to do that, all you do is take out your notebook and reread these points one at a time. And as you do that, it's effectively like retaking all of these practice questions. You're just trying to train your brain to understand and recognize high yield bits of information. And over time, because you're doing 40 question practice sets, if not more, I mean, look how thick this notebook is. This really adds up. Questions everywhere, high yield information everywhere. Reviewing this is so easy. You just open the page, read a sentence, read a sentence, read more sentences, do more practice questions, recall high yield information. And every time that I did this, I was reactivating those neural networks in my brain and bringing these memories to the forefront of my awareness and recalling information. And just to show you how simple this really is, I mean, let's do an example. So if we look at this point, subarachnoid hemorrhage, CSF findings, yellow or pink, increased opening pressure, increased WBCs, dramatically increased RBCs, glucose is within normal limits, and increased protein. And then for my reference, you can see that I even write out what you would see in bacterial versus viral meningitis. So anyway, I really hope that this was useful for you guys. And I wanted to show you that I'm not just some clickbait influencer on the internet trying to sell you on some crappy method for you know increasing your potential as a student or learning more or whatever. This is something that I believe in strongly that clearly you can see I practiced back in the day so I just wanted to demonstrate that when you're looking for some inspiration or motivation to keep going during Dedicated. I hope that this video was useful to you. Please subscribe, share it with your friends who need a little bit of motivation to get through this difficult time and drop some comments in the comment section about what your method is for improving your question bank scores. Also, this is my orchid, which I think is dying. So if anybody knows how to take care of orchids, please give me some recommendations.